As we have already stated, the Quran says multiple times that Allah revealed his perfect message to those who were before. Let's turn to the Quran and hear what it has to say. Surah 3 verses 3 to 4 Translation Pictal He hath revealed unto thee, Muhammad, the scripture with truth, confirming that which was revealed before it, even as he revealed the Torah and the Gospel. Aforetime, for a guidance to mankind, and hath revealed the criterion of right and wrong. Lo, those who disbelieve the revelations of Allah, theirs will be a heavy doom. Allah is mighty, able to requite the wrong. So there you have it! Another passage that shows that the Bible was perfectly given by God to those before, and that the alleged prophet of Islam is basing his claims on supposed biblical support. Now we'll skim over that can of worms for a moment, because our primary goal for this segment is to show that the later convert to Christ, the man named Paul, who was one of the greatest influences God used for converting the Gentiles to the Gospels, whose writings make up the majority of the New Testament canon, is actually an authoritative source that even Muslims need to acknowledge. Now, when we refer to the Gospels as found in Scripture, we are talking about the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are written accounts about the life of Jesus. As Jesus never physically wrote anything about himself, but had the Gospels written through his disciples after he ascended to heaven. Now it is through Luke that we get our connection to Paul, and we get this by knowing how the author of the book of Luke starts, and how the book of Acts starts. Luke 1 verses 1 to 4 for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Acts 1 verses 1 to 3. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now notice how both of these books start off addressing the man named Theophilus. And notice how the author asks us in Acts to recall what was said in his previous writing, showing that the same author of the Gospel of Luke wrote the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we are introduced to Saul, a man who was a Jewish zealot who persecuted the new faith of Christianity. On his way to Damascus, he was stopped by the Lord and blinded by him so Saul could be healed by a Christian named Ananias. After he was healed, his name was changed to Paul. He preached to the Jews and Gentiles about his encounter with Jesus, met the disciples, and went on to write the majority of the New Testament epistles. Now we know that Paul knew both Luke and Mark. Specifically in 2 Timothy 4 verse 11, he says, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. In Philemon verse 24, he says, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. 
being Marcus and Lucas are the names of the Gospel writers. The Gospels are directly associated with Acts, and Acts is directly associated with Paul's epistles. If you are going to deny the epistles of Paul, you will have to deny the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke, which if the Gospels were given by inspiration of God, and you have to deny them in order to follow the Quran, you might need to ask if you should be following the Quran 